Hello and welcome to this financial analysis lesson, which will focus on the techniques for investment appraisal. After you have finished this lesson, you will be able to firstly understand the context of investment appraisal for creating value in business, secondly, learn the investment appraisal techniques used in decision making, and thirdly, Understand sensitivity and scenario analysis to test whether you are making the correct decision. To begin with, let's look at what is meant by investment appraisal. The aim of investment appraisal is to use available resources to create value in excess of the cost of the investment. In other words, considering the risk involved, the value of the expected future cash flows need to be greater than the investment to be made. And for investors, investment appraisal is a useful way to gauge the kind of returns the organization is generating. Investment appraisal also involves asking whether the returns are good enough and the best possible given the estimated risk levels. Investments with less predictable future cash flows will warrant a higher risk profile and vice versa. The key here is for managers to strike a balance between the level of risk and the level of expected returns. The various steps in the investment appraisal decision process are shown in the slide. The first two steps focus on information gathering and require you to forecast the revenue, costs and associated cash flows of your investment. Also, identify any potential limiting factors, such as budget constraints, timings, or a need to generate a specific rate of return on the investment. The next two steps focus on selecting the appropriate investment appraisal technique and setting specific variables, such as the discount rate and the time horizon. And the final two steps in the process focus on improving the quality of the decision making by constructing sensitivity analysis and what-if type scenarios to help decide whether to consider or reject the investment. Let's now look at the different choice of investment appraisal techniques. There are two simple techniques which are frequently used but which measure different outcomes. The payback method measures the time it takes for you to get your money back and the return on capital employed method measures the amount of value created from the investment. The two more complex techniques focus on discounting future cash flows and consider both the timing and risk aspect of the investment. The main methods here are the net present value and the internal rate of return. No investment appraisal technique can give the right answer or is the right technique for all situations, and an organization may have its own preferred method. Let's now consider each of these methods in more detail, with some worked examples. The payback method simply measures how long it will take for the future returns to pay back the initial investment. This method is often suitable for organizations that have a set period when investments need to be paid back by, or there may be a set period when funding is available for. If the investment payback is within the criterion payback period, then the investment can be considered. The payback method is simple to use and easy to understand, and can be used to make a quick first assessment of an investment's viability. If available capital is in limited supply and there is strong demand, payback within a certain period may be a critical factor, and it considers risk in a simple way, which is the length of time it will take before you recover your investment. However, a main drawback of the payback method is that it ignores total returns over the life of the project. It will favor a short-term project, which returns investment quickly but might then tail off and not give long-term returns over a longer life. It also looks at paying back the capital only, not at how profitable the return is. In practice, the payback method 
is normally used to complement other methods, not the main technique. Here is example of the payback method being used to assess the viability of two mutually exclusive projects. If you assume that the organization's criteria for project acceptance is a four-year payback, then Project B will be the preferred investment as it has the faster speed of payback. But note how this ignores that Project A has a higher forecast total return over the life of the project. Now let's consider the second investment appraisal technique, Return on Capital Employed or ROCA, which is calculated by taking project returns over the capital employed. ROCA gives the return generated by the investment by comparing the accounting profit to the required capital outlay of the investment. It is most commonly used by comparing the return to the minimum hurdle rate, which must be achieved. This will often be an organization's cost of capital which is how much it costs an organization to fund the investment, such as the interest rate charged for a bank loan. Rocker can also be used to compare different projects to establish which has the highest return on investment. The Rocker method is simple to use and easy to understand, whereas the payback method focuses on the timing of the cash inflow Rocker focuses on the profitability of the investment. As such, it can give a quick first assessment of the viability of an investment, which is usually whether the return is higher than the organization's minimum hurdle rate. In addition, you can easily compare the Rocker of different investment options, and it allows investors to use the same benchmark to evaluate management's performance. However, Rocker ignores the time value of money meaning it could take many years to generate the required returns, and the quantifiable size of the investment and the value creation is ignored. In addition, the level of risk involved needs to be assessed separately, and using accounting profit rather than cash flows can be open to interpretation. For example, calculating depreciation can be subjective. Here is an example of the Rocker method being used to assess the viability of a single project. If you assume that the organization's criteria for project acceptance is a hurdle rate of 12% and the investment proposal generates 15%, then the proposal is above the hurdle rate, so in theory it should be accepted. However, the example averages the profits across all 10 years. It could be that the organization must cope with heavy losses in the early years, with profits only being made in later years, and the time value of money has been ignored, which means the organization does not know when it will recoup its investment. When using the Rocker method to compare projects, a simple comparison may guide you to consider the higher Rocker. However, it is wise to take other factors into consideration, such as whether the organization can fund the initial size of the investment or demand a certain size of value creation. In the slide example, management may still choose the larger factory despite a lower rocker simply because the size of value creation for the larger factory is much greater. Now let's consider the more complex and time-consuming investment appraisal techniques, net present value and the internal rate of return. With NPV, future cash flows are adjusted to the present value to reflect the time value of money by using the discounting process. A key principle of NPV is that the present value of the expected future cash inflows must be at least equal to the present value of any cash outflows for the investment to be worth considering. The discount factor used in the calculation adjusts for risk and timing, and the terminal value estimates cash flows after the forecast period into perpetuity. With IRR, 
This is when the rate of discount produces a zero NPV. You can think of IRR as the rate of growth a project is expected to generate. A project with a substantially higher IRR value than other available options would likely stand a better chance of being considered. With these discounted cash flow techniques, the time value of money is factored into the investment appraisal of an investment, and the inclusion of a discount factor allows managers to include a risk component in the investment. The higher the discount rate, the higher the perceived risk. The IRR makes it simple to compare investments and benchmark rates with hurdle rates or costs of capital. And both methods allow for sensitivity analysis, such as variations in the discount rate. However, the increased complexity of these methods does not necessarily result in accuracy. More variables can lead to more areas of uncertainty, and some variables may be more sensitive to small changes than others. They can also be time-consuming to produce, and if a limiting factor is obvious, such as the availability of funding, then a simpler method, such as payback, may be more appropriate. The slide shows an example of how cash flows have been discounted over four years, at a discount rate of 10%. So, for example, if the projected cash flow in year two is $5,000, then the present value of these returns at a discounted rate of 10% will be $4,132. If the present value of all future cash flows minus the initial investment is positive, then this proposal could be a candidate for acceptance. However, it is possible that another candidate proposal may generate a higher NPV. Deciding on a discount factor is one of the important tasks when it comes to discounted cash flow analysis. A discount factor is needed to reflect the time value of money and the risk of the investment. To create value, investments need to compensate for loss of interest and purchasing power and deliver a risk premium to compensate for taking higher risk. Higher risk investments will need a higher return and hence a higher discount rate. The process of deciding on the discount factor is subjective and involves accounting for interest and inflation and the risk of the investment. In other words, how likely is it that outcomes will be as predicted? If it is less likely, then this leads to higher risk and a higher discount rate. In practice, organizations will opt for their weighted average cost of capital as the discount factor, or a value that represents a risk-free rate of return plus a risk premium. With the internal rate of return, what you are measuring is the return generated by an investment, allowing for the time value of money. It is the rate of discount which, when applied to the future cash flows, produces a zero NPV, and it tells you that the cost of the investment has generated this forecast return. It is used to evaluate the attractiveness of an investment and provides an easy-to-use comparison between different investments. When using IRR in an investment appraisal, a common hurdle rate for IRR is WACC. An investment is often rejected if the IRR does not exceed this and a risk premium can also be added to the hurdle rate to allow for the assessed risk of the investment. In this case, the IRR would have to exceed this to be considered. Calculating IRR is really one of trial and error. In your spreadsheet, you need to alter the discount factor until a zero NPV is achieved. The slide shows the steps you need to follow when calculating the NPV. The first step is to forecast future cash flows based on future inflows and outflows on an annual basis. Next, choose an appropriate discount factor. Then apply the discount factor 
to the forecast cash flows to derive the present value of both inflows and outflows. Once you have subtracted the present value of outflows from the present value of inflows, you have your NPV. If it is positive, then the investment should be considered. The slide shows an example of how this is calculated in practice with the associated positive NPV. Now that you have understood how to select the appropriate investment appraisal technique, the final steps in the process focus on improving the quality of the decision making. Here you can construct sensitivity analysis and what-if type scenarios to help decide whether to consider or reject the investment. Sensitivity analysis looks at the impact of changing one specific variable, such as the discount factor, or the initial upfront investment, or certain costs being higher or lower than forecast. By contrast, scenario analysis considers many uncertainties in different scenarios, such as the emergence of a new competitor or a price war breaking out. By creating a given set of scenarios, you can determine how changes in variables will impact the investment outcome and therefore the decision process. In summary, investment appraisal ensures available resources are used to create value in excess of the cost of the investment. There are several invest appraisal techniques available, including payback, rocker, NPV and IRR. And when calculating your appraisals, ensure you forecast future cash flows, identify any limiting factors, and select the most appropriate appraisal technique for your needs. Then, set any variables. And finally, conduct sensitivity and scenario analysis to consider or reject the investment. Thank you for participating and see you next time on another exciting business training lesson from Pontema.